Hey, what's up? It's your girl Alicia coming to you with another inspirational video. Listen, I know and understand that it has been a while since I have posted a video, but what better time to present to you guys a video as we are rapidly closing out the year of 2019 and opening up the year of 20. I'm so excited and I pray that you are excited as well on what the Lord is about to bring in the year of 2020. 20. Listen, today we are going to talk about how to prepare for the new year 2020. And I know that many of us in the beginning of our year or in the beginning of a new year, we tend to create New Year's resolutions. Some of us even go so deep to create goals. Some of us create vision boards. Some of us just make plans, right? And many times when we make these plans, like we did in the beginning of 2019, right? We made plans for ourselves, the things that we wanted to see come to pass. And some of us, a lot of things, or maybe some things did not come to pass. And you find yourself becoming discouraged. You find yourself becoming frustrated. You feel disappointed. And you may even feel like a failure at some point, right? But I want to say to you that we must must remember that not all plans um, that we make, right, is in alignment with God. And I repeat this again, not all plans that we make is in alignment with God. So when we are making our plans, we must begin to consult with the Lord and ask him to order and direct our steps. Sometimes we make plans on our own and we don't even seek the Lord to see if these plans are in alignment with him. And when we find ourselves just doing things on our own, many times this can create frustration. It can create disappointment. It can create or make us feel like we have failed. But I want to question you. What is it that you have failed? Have you failed yourself or have you failed the things that you created because they were not in alignment with God? And so as 2020 rapidly approaches us, I want to share with you four things things that you can accomplish in the year of 2019. And if you lost anything in the year of 2019, I want to ask you, how did losing whatever it was make you feel? Did it make you feel like a failure? Did it make you feel let down? What were the feelings that it created. And once you are able to tackle these feelings and these emotions, you will know how to handle a situation if it does not, those visions, those goals, if they do not come to pass in the year 2020. Okay. So once you ask yourself these questions, you'll begin to get a, 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 a clearer picture of certain things, right? And I ask you to ask yourself these questions because too often we think whenever we make plans, whenever we do things, whenever we write out our goals and our visions, that they are supposed to come to pass. And if they're not coming to pass, that's where the emotional roller coaster starts to take place, right? And many times, we one thing we must understand is that whenever we create these goals, these visions, no matter what they are, we it has to be in alignment with God. I cannot stress this enough. It has to be in alignment with God, okay? Proverbs uh, 19.21 says, Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. So once we can understand that the plans that we create, it's in our heart, but it's up to the Lord to prevail and make those visions, those goals, those dreams come to pass, then we will not have the feelings of discouragement. We won't feel like failures. We will not be disappointed and we won't feel let down. Why? Because we'll understand that, yeah, we created these visions and these goals, but is this part of God's plan. And number two, I want to challenge you to write the vision and make it plain. This Just because your plans in 2019 did not come to fruition does not necessarily mean that they will not 
come to pass. We must understand that everything will unfold the way that God has purpose for them to unfold. Everything does not happen in our timing. It will happen in God's timing because we must understand that God's timing is always per uh, perfect. Okay. Second Peter chapter three, verse eight says a thousand years is like a day to the Lord and a day is like a thousand years. What am I saying? Although we have created visions or goals or whatever you may have in 2017, 2018, they may not have came to pass and you may just start seeing those things come to pass in 2020. Why? Because it does not happen in our timing. It will always happen in God's timing. God does everything in decency and in order. When we can understand that God would do things as he purposed, God would do things as he pleased, we will have a better chance of understanding that not everything is going to happen when we want them to. Habakkuk 2 uh, verse 2 says, so write the vision and make it plain upon tablets that he may run who reads it. That means write that vision, write it. Listen, just because you write a vision does not mean that it won't come to pass. Again, I said it earlier, it is in God's perfect timing. So even though the vision may not come to pass, I want to challenge you, my sister or my brother, to wait on the Lord. The Bible says, they that wait up on the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount upon wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary, okay? They shall walk and not faint. Hear me and understand that whenever you create a vision, whenever you create a goal, whenever you create your New Year's resolutions to those who believe in those, I want to challenge you to tarry on the Lord. To tarry means to wait. When you can begin to wait on the Lord, you will understand that all things will happen in his timing. Why? Because all things work together for the good of them who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. It's not your purpose, but his purpose. And see, number three, number three, ask God for guidance. I see so many times we create visions, we create goals, we create these New Year's resolutions in our hearts, right? But while we are creating these things and we are writing the vision, we're making it plain. We do not take the time to ask the Lord for guidance. We don't ask the Lord to enlarge our territory. We don't ask God to open up doors. We don't ask God to direct our paths, that he will make our paths straight. We do not seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness that all things will be added unto us. Why? Because we are get doing our heart's desires. Yes, the Bible says that when we desire things, God will give us our heart's desires. But what we must understand, my friends, is that it has to be in alignment with God's will and purpose for your life. Okay. And so a lot of times we do not, we, we do not ask God what it is that he wants, but we will take the time to write out what it is that we want. So I want to challenge you to not be consumed with your life that you get so caught up on your own visions that you don't take the time out to seek God, that you don't take the time out to pray to God, that you don't take the time out to see what the Lord has for you, my friend. So instead of operating in your own being, I want to personally challenge you to seek God. I want to personally challenge you to not put God on the back burner because many times what what, what happens is we will put God on the back burner and we got all these visions and these goals in place and we say what we want and we do what we want. We do as we please, but nine times out of 10 or sometimes those are not things that God has for us. 
And so I want to challenge you to allow God to guide you. How does the Lord guide you? He guides you through prayer. He guides you through fasting. Understand that when we pray, we are to pray without ceasing. Understand that when we fast, we are to fast and pray. And understand that God will guide us through his word. Many times we start to focus on the things that we want, but we don't take time out to be directed through God's word. A lot of times when we pray, listen, many times we pray and we don't take the time to humble ourselves to hear from the Lord. When we pray, we must get in position to sit still that we are blocking everything out and we are hearing directly from the Lord. I cannot tell you how many times I hear people say, hey, Alicia, I don't hear from God. He no longer speaks to me. Yes, he is. God speaks to us in mysterious ways. He speaks to us in ways that we may not even comprehend it. We are, a lot of times we look for God to speak to us in an audible voice, but that is not the way that God always speaks to us. And this goes for another video because we have to understand how do we hear from God? Okay, and so again, it's through prayer, it's through fasting, it's through his word. The Bible says in Proverbs 16, 9, it says, a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his, directs his step. And many times again, we plan, but we don't allow God to direct us. And when things start to uh, become uncomfortable for us, we sometimes throw in the towel and give up. And understand this, my friends, that many times when we become uncomfortable, that's God working things out on your behalf, depending on the situation. Jeremiah 29, uh, 11 through 13 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come to me and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. So again, we must again understand that God have plans for our future. God have plans for our present. God have plans for us right now in this season. And number four, I want to challenge you to put in the work. To put in the work does not mean that you're just fasting and you're praying, right? It does not mean that you are just fasting and praying and sitting back and just waiting on God to make things happen. It's not going to happen like that. My friend, if you know that you are looking for a job, you got to put the application out there. You got to update your resume. You got to seek for job opportunities that will be presented to you, okay? You got to challenge yourself by putting in the work. If you know that you want to write a book, hey, it's going to take some buckling down. You're going to have to sit down, sit still, and begin to write and focus. If you know, my friend, that you want to draw closer to the Lord, that means you're going to have to start spending time with the Lord. You're going to have to start uh, trying to hear from the Lord through his word, through prayer, through fasting, through worshiping, praising and worshiping God. If you have plans to lose weight, listen, you are not going to lose weight by sitting there eating all kinds of fast foods or not just, uh, oh, if I just eat once a day, I'll lose weight. You're not going to lose weight that way. You're going to have to put Put in the work. And so Colossians chapter 3 verses 23 through 24 says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. And Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 says, and let us not grow weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. And I'm saying this, my friend, because many times 
We create all of these goals, these New Year's resolutions. We create all of the things that we want to see manifest in our lives. So I want to say to you that as we are ending the year 2019 and we are approaching the year 2020, I want to challenge you to not just write out your vision that is plain as day that when people read it, they run. Listen, I want to challenge you to reflect on 2019, 2018, 2017, 2016, whatever years you need to reflect and see how the Lord has blessed you in those times, right? And see how far God has brought you to those goals, to those visions, and begin to work on those things. Hey, listen to me. Understand that it is not always going to happen the way you desire for it to happen. There may be some jumps. There may be some hoops. There may be some loops that you got to get through. There may be some hurdles that you just seem like you can't even understand or can't even jump over. But again, I want you to tarry, to wait on the Lord so he can begin to reveal to you that which he has for you. So while you're making your 2020 plans, my friend, listen to me. Don't just map out your goals, but challenge yourself to say, hey, is this of God? Or God, what is it that you desire for me to do with my life in 2020? What is it that you want to see more of me do? What is it that you want to see happen in my life that I could possibly change so that you can begin to unfold things in my life? And when you begin, my sister or my brother, to uh, rest upon the Lord, and you begin to trust him, and you begin to pray without ceasing, you will begin to see that things are slowly, slowly coming to pass. So trust and believe all things work together for the good of them who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. Don't let it just be about your purpose, but let it be about God's purpose. I see so many people putting God in a box. And when you put God in a box, he cannot do as he please. He cannot blow your mind. Why? Because you have put him in a box and you boxed him in that he cannot show you that which he has to show you. So my sister, my brother, I want to challenge you to trust in the Lord. Again, I want you to, number one, reflect on the year ending. Number two, Write the vision and make it plain. Number three, ask God for guidance. And number four, put in the work. Okay? So I pray that as you approach 2020, that nothing but prosperity, nothing but peace, nothing but miracles, signs, and wonders will come into your life. And God will begin to blow your mind. I'm so excited about the year 2020 and what God is doing. I'm excited to bring more videos to you guys. I have a lot going on in my life for the year of 2020 alone. This is the year, okay? This is the year that God is about to blow many of our minds. Many of us have been waiting so patiently on the Lord and the Lord is saying that your time is here. I am about to elevate you. If he have not already done so, but he is doing some things in the lives of his people. And I am just so excited to see things come to fruition. And if God has done anything for you in the year of 2019 and some things that you want to see happen in the year of 2020, listen, I want to challenge you to drop some some things down in the comment section and I will begin to pray and intercede as well on your behalf and I need you to be praying too and I need you more than anything to trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding allow him to order your steps and direct your paths until we meet again my sister and my brothers in the next year of 2020 I love you I love you I love you so much. Until we meet again, God bless you. Bye for now.